Professor Patama Jindari invited me uh, and informed me about this uh, conference. I was in the US at that time. So I readily agreed and uh, for several reasons. Of course, one of the main reasons, of course, this is the Professor Rao's birth centenary. Actually, I would like to congratulate uh, Professor Patama Jindari and the Indian Academy of Sciences for thinking about this program. You know, even to celebrate the 100th uh, centenary that itself is a big contribution by the Indian Academy of Sciences, headed by Professor Parthama Jumdar as the president. So we'd like to thank, thank him for this purpose. Now, <coughs> I'm happy to see several people here. This is the last lecture in the conference. In the last 55 years, I have been attending conferences. You must know I'm very old. So in the last 55 years, I've been attending conferences. The first day, first lecture, the hall is full. But the last lecture of the conference, either the chairman of the, con of the conference and the speaker, but nobody, nobody else is there present. But I'm happy to see several of you are still there. So there is still interest in statistics. So what I'm going to speak today is actually, as I said, uh, Professor Deepak Day has already covered the material and all the other colleagues have done. So I am going to repeat the, several of them uh, today. But then uh, before I go into that, I would like to speak a few things about Professor Rao. Uh, you know, I wrote a, a sort of article on Professor Rao, it's published in Current Science in 2014. It's called a Life in Statistics. Uh, Professor Praval Choudhury this morning uh, showed that glimpses of Indian statistical heritage. So there is an article by several of the uh, leading statisticians who are no more but who are also present at the time. It was published by uh, John Wiley some time back. Where Professor Rao, it's a it's sort of autobiographical article. He himself wrote that article. So at some places he has said um, why... Uh, he has come up to statistics. You see, what happened was uh, his father was an inspector of police. So he has been, uh, you know, for the, his father got transfers from place to place every one year or two years. So he has gone to several uh, places for his uh, school education. Finally, after his retirement, um, Professor Rao's father settled down in Visakhapatnam. So there, uh, he joined, um, you know, after his schooling, he joined Avian College, where uh, Sir C. V. Raman uh, uh, was also there. Uh, and then uh, during his uh, undergraduate program, he got C. V. Raman Awards, several of them. Then he joined Andhra University, where I was also a student in mathematics department. And we had a professor called Professor Vomi Ramaswamy. He is an internationally known um, He's a professor, uh, student of uh, Professor Littlewood, those who know number theory. Littlewood uh, from Cambridge. Hardy Littlewood. Hardy Littlewood. So Littlewood is, was his advisor. And uh, Professor Ramaswamy was also my professor when I was at Andhra University. So Professor Rao was also his student. And so, um, so they graduated. Professor Rao was, was first in the university. But then uh, he wanted to do research. Because his professor Rao's father was very much interested that he should go and do research. That's why he has come into that. And then when he has applied for a research scholar position, remember he was first in the university and uh, very high mark marks, but he was not given research scholarship. If he would have been given research scholarship, we would not have been talking about statistics <laughs> as a statistician, world famous statistician here. So he was not you know, given a research scholarship. And so what happened is why he was given? You see some bureaucracy, so he has, they said you have applied a day late. But that should not be this risk criterion for giving research scholarship. If a person is first class first, what else do you want? So anyway, he was not given, so he was looking for a job. Then he went to Calcutta for some job in the army. So because army was doing some uh, counting uh, work, so they asked, you know, the math, they were looking for some mathematics people, and so Rao went there. And then Calcutta, he didn't, um, he was not selected. So he was very disappointed, but he was sharing a hotel with somebody by name Subramanya. 
that Subramanya came from Bombay uh, to do some uh, training in ISI. And it so happened that Subramanya happened to be a roommate of uh, uh, Professor Rao, of course at that time he was not professor, in a hotel. So then Subramanya suggested, why don't you go to Indian Statistical Institute, they have some jobs there. You see, all these things by, occurred by chance. So if, if any of these things, links would not have been there, Professor Rao would not have become the statistician whom we are talking about. So that's why he says, uh, I don't know if Subramanya, I didn't meet Subramanya, where I would have been in, uh, in this. So in fact, he mentions about all this in his uh, article. So that is the uh, type of uh, you know, chances which, so life is full of chances. So you never know what will vary one will to the other. So they, actually, as somebody said, uh, you see, Rao, Professor Rao would have been famous just by his first paper. He need not write, uh, you know, he has written about 400 or six papers or something like that. So just one paper would have been make enough for, to make him uh, famous. The first paper he wrote as a student, which contains the two things, Kramer Rao inequality and uh, Rao Blackwell theorem. That should have been enough to make him famous. But then uh, he did much more. So what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about that. I'll skip some mathematics, which, uh, which everybody knows. All of you know, as the students, you learn. So when I prepared these slides, I thought there would be heterogeneous audience of, uh, from different branches of science. So I thought I'll make it uh, sort of complete. But then uh, now I see that most of you are uh, all students of statistics. And all my colleagues, I, I like their pardon uh, for this elementary statistics, uh, which I'm going to talk about. But then uh, there are a few things which of interest. Uh, see, Kramer of inequality is uh, evergreen, as they say. So there's still people are working on that, even though it's more than uh, it's because now it is called, uh, it is not a proper name. It's, uh, you know, it's like any other word. Like uh, you say the Xerox, and you don't say photocopy, you say we went into Xerox. Uh, Xerox is actually a name of a company. But we say, why don't you Xerox instead of say, why do you photocopy? So like the Kramer of inequality also has become a sort of uh, name which is like, it's like any other word in English language. So, so of course, uh, all of you know, Professor Rao did this in 1942, and then uh, there was a world war, so all the publications, journals stopped publishing. So Sankhya was not published for three, four years, and other journals have not been published. And then uh, the communication between West and East uh, was not there much. So that's why this, uh, these papers were in, uh, not uh, known to other people. So there were some other people who also independently did the same inequality. And that's why several people are, have contributed to this. So I'll talk a little bit about some of these things and then uh, some recent work in this area. So this is, of course, uh, all of you are, are talking about this. It's a very famous, very handsome man. So you can see that, um, you know, if you see there are other pictures. So Professor Radha Rao, also known as C.R. Rao, uh, you know, is September 10th, 1920. Uh, we are celebrating his uh, centenary year. He was born in Karnataka, present Karnataka. His MA in mathematics from Andhra University in 1940, MA in statistics in 43, PhD in Cambridge from 1948, and uh, he has a DSC also from Cambridge based on his uh, work over the years, and that was in 1965. So he has extensively contributed uh, to the areas of statistical inference, multivariate analysis, characterization problems in probability theory, combinatorics, design of experiments, uh, theory of generalized inverses in matrix theory, statistical genetics, and of course, uh, differential geometrical methods in statistics. So even though he did differential geometrical methods in statistics in 1945, it was not, uh, you know, because statisticians really work in differential geometry. So it took some years for people to find out its use. He was ahead of his times. So this, uh, this uh, colleagues uh, have talked about, so it was in 1946, 
Uh, Mahalanobi uh, received a cable from uh, J. Trevor, uh, his anthropology department of Cambridge University, to send someone who can apply methods of multivariate analysis developed at ISI to analyze the measurements made on skeletal material dug out from ancient graves in Africa to trace the origin of the people who lived in the origin. So he got a telegram and then uh, Professor Rao and then uh, Ramakrishna Mukherjee, they both uh, went to England uh, to work uh, with uh, uh, Trevor. So Professor Malnabis, uh, by the way, my professor means Malnabis only, the professor. And uh, as my, uh, Professor Bhattamajjumar said, uh, Dr. Rao is Dr. Rao. So, deputed C.R. Rao to work on the project. So, C.R. Rao spent two years, 1946 to 48, in Cambridge as a research scholar at the museum and produced a report on statistical analysis of measurements, which was incorporated in his thesis for the PhD degree and later published also as a book. Among his many contributions to statistical inference, one which was and is still considered to be of uh, extreme importance is an inequality, which is now known as the Kramerov inequality with applications in the area of statistics, <coughs> physics, signal processing, and electrical engineering, besides other sciences. So one of the basic problems, this is for the students uh, who already know, is to obtain information on estimation or estimation about an unknown parameter of a population based on an observed sample drawn from the population according to some sampling scheme. A natural question is how to estimate the unknown parameter or a known function of it, and how to compare one method of estimation with another. A criterion or criteria have to be specified to judge the performance of the estimators before deciding one estimate is better than another. This is the standard problem in uh, statistical inference. So just to give a, a little bit of uh, understanding, so suppose x is a random variable distribution function f dot theta. So in the probability a less than x less than or equal to b is f b theta minus f a theta. Now, th theta is a scalar parameter or a vector parameter. If theta is known and f is known, then the, you can compute the number there. Typically, the parameter is unknown and the parameter has to be estimated, so from the sample of observations. So a function depending, t depending on the observations is sometimes called a statistic. So if the statistic t evaluated the observations is chosen as an estimate for the parameter, then the statistic is called an estimator and the function is called an estimate of the parameter. So these are all, as I said, for students, others can ignore that. So it's obvious there are many different functions, uh, t of x1, which can be chosen as estimators. Though not all of them are suitable. An estimator is, of course, unbiased if the expected value of uh, the statistic t or estimator t is uh, g theta, that is the expected value of the estimator. And if you want to know what is, is there something is good or not, you have to compare the difference between uh, expected value of t and uh, the function which you are trying to estimate. And sometimes the, the difference is called the bias of the estimator. And, and the bias, so you, you sort of measure the performance of t for g theta by one of these, uh, one example. This is one, uh, it's called mean square error. So this is the t is the statistic which you used for estimating g theta, so the difference here. And of course, if the t is unbiased, this is the variance of these things. So the problem is how to choose an unbiased estimator with the least variance if it exists. This is where C.R. Rao has made a fundamental contribution, which is now known as the kramer rao inequality. So Rao obtained what is known as Kramer of lower bound with applications to these uh, areas and most recently in uh, quantum information and quantum statistics. So even in physics, uh, it has been used now. Actually, Professor Kher Parsardi uh, was expected to be uh, one of the speakers. He would have given uh, how Kramer of inequality is used in quantum statistics, but he couldn't make it uh, for this. So in branch of statistical inference, Kramer Rao bound, or some, some, sometimes called Kramer Rao bound, sometimes called Kramer Rao lower bound, sometimes called Kramer Rao inequality, and there is also in Freshe, Damwa, Kramer Rao. So, these all the four have done inequality, sometimes termed as information inequality. So, they are all the same. So, they all obtained in the years, Kramer was discovered it in 1946, 
uh, he has a book on mathematical um, methods of mathematical statistics, probably like that. So 1946, Professor Rao, even though he did earlier, but his paper was published in 1945, Freshay in 1943, Domo in 1945, all of whom independently derived in 1940s. So there are several people who discovered that. But the name, Kramer of inequality, was given by Neyman. So that's how it is uh, it's known uh, right present. Uh, this, uh, this history, uh, one of the colleagues did uh, explain. So at the young age of 24, Sierra was teaching a course on estimation to the students of the master's degree program of Calcutta University. And I was explaining to the class the concept of asymptotic efficiency of an estimator and mentioned Fisher's result that the asymptotic variance of a consistent estimator is bounded below by the reciprocal of the Fisher information. So some student asked, uh, if you are doing asymptotics, means very large sample. But I might have only 10 observations. I mean, it's not a large sample. So what do you do in that case? So, so one student asked. And that student is supposed to uh, happen to be Professor V.M. Dandekar, an economist. And uh, because of his uh, question, that night uh, Professor Rao worked, like, uh, unlike some of us, after we go home, we don't look at the books. So, but he did that as a teacher. And then he worked to the midnight, and the uh, whole night he worked, and then came up with this inequality. One of the students asked whether such a result can be established for finite samples. Rao went back home, worked all night, and proved the inequality the next day, which is now known as the kramer rao inequality. Now, as I said, uh, all this uh, information is uh, factual, because Rao himself wrote in his uh, essay on, uh, in Glimpses of Indian Statistical Heritage. It's, so it is it's not from some uh, hearsay. It's from what they call horse mouth. So a paper containing this result was published in 1945. Although the paper was complete in 43 due to delays in publication and suspension of many journals, including Sankhya during the war, the result could not be published. Rao sent a reprint of his paper to J. Neiman, who named the information bound as Kramer Rao inequality. So Neiman is the one who called this. Neyman, people should know Neyman. Neyman Pearson Lemma. Huh? So, testing of hypothesis. So, Neyman Pearson Lemma, the same Neyman. So, he was, a, uh, he was a professor at University of California, Berkeley, for several years. So, he's from Poland, but he migrated to U.S. and then uh, stayed on in Berkeley for several years. So, for more details about Professor Rao regarding his life, his association with statistics and statisticians, there are several interviews uh, when there is one Professor DeGroote, he has a, published an interview with Professor Rao in 1987. Then uh, this book, uh, and Glimpses of Indian Statistical Heritage, edited by Ghosh, uh, Parthasarathy and Mitra. And then Anil Bera has an interview with Professor Rao in 2003. Rajaram Bhatt, he has an interview with Professor Rao in the Resonance. Resonance is published by the Indian Academy of Sciences. And I have written an article in 2014, published in the current science. So my article is entitled, a CR Rao, A Life in Statistics. So Kramer Rao lower bound indicates that the variance of any unbiased estimator cannot be lower than the reciprocal of the Fisher information under some conditions. So any unbiased estimator which achieves this lower bound is uh, said to be efficient. If such an estimate exists, then it's termed as the minimum variance unbiased estimator. All these things you have done in your class. But, you see, there is a lot of relations between these bounds, as uh, Professor Deepak Day uh, talked about yesterday, Bregman divergence, using that. There is sort of unification of these uh, bounds. Most, all of them, and most of them actually, are consequence of cauchy schwarz inequality. cauchy schwarz inequality is a famous inequality in mathematics, and it's, they are all special cases of that. So De Dembo, Cover and Thomas in 1991 provides a unified treatment of the Kramer of inequality, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, entropy inequalities, Fisher information, linking many other inequalities in statistics, mathematics, information theory, and physics. They show that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle can be derived as a consequence of the Kramer of inequality. And uh, the ref reference is uh, here. I have written that Richards, Donald Richards. In 2013, there's a, a inf, uh, reference only. It has been found out earlier. It has been talked about earlier. An interesting result 
due to STAM 1959 is the derivation of Weil Eisenberg uncertainty principle in physics using a specific version of the premier Rao lower bound. And there is a book by Rai Friedan in 1998 about uh, applications of kramer Rao lower bound in physics. So these are all uh, several areas where in signal processing and physics, uh, in other areas, they have been using this kramer Rao inequality. And still, if you look into IEEE transactions and information theory, you will find several applications of kramer Rao lower bound. Uh, it's a Professor Parsardi, uh, he has uh, written, a, you know, he works in quantum probability and uh, quantum stochastic process. So he has discussed the philosophy of Kramerov and Bhattacharya inequalities in quantum statistics. He has a, a big long paper. Uh, maybe we can still invite him to for this collection. So that that will have that thing. So, so in the classical Kramerov inequalities, all of you know, but let me just uh, tell you a little bit about it. So suppose you have an unknown scalar parameter, which is to be estimated from this observation of a random variable x, and with some, which has some, say, some probability density function. And of course, this the density integrates to 1. One of the basic assumptions of the integrality is the integral, of the, which I have given earlier, can be differentiated. These are all, I will skip this. And then, of course, uh, the standard uh, assumptions are there. And if it is unbiased, you have this uh, equality. And then some regularity conditions are there, so uh, let me skip those things. And this, of course, important uh, condition, this support of the point does not depend on the parameter, that's important for this. So, so you see using uh, you know, standard notation, and this is the, the so-called Cauchy-Schwarz inequality in the simplest form for any two square integrable functions, g and h, so integral g h x x square dx is less than or equal to integral g square x times integral s square x dx. So, and then ap apply these things with, uh, with particular g and particular h and apply Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, you get the uh, so-called kramer rao inequality. So, it's called Fisher information. So, you have the uh, st standard kramer rao inequality. So, this is the very famous inequality. And of course, several versions, what happens if the regular conditions do not hold, how to do it in the multidimensional case, and um, chapman robbins inequality, as somebody has mentioned yesterday. So like that, there are several other inequalities and improvement over this. So some of the things which I will mention now, but there are several other inequalities which physicists studied in this area, so which I would like to point out. And of course, if it is not unbiased, there is a slight variation of that. So you have this, uh, you, have, you have to include the bias and so on. In the multidimensional case, you have a vector of the parameters, and then um, this is the score matrix. So this is the IJ, JK elements of the score matrix. So you have this or information matrix, you have this I theta. So you have, if you have a, a statistic, and suppose the expected value of statistics is this function psi j theta, and you assume some conditions on these functions. So this is the lower bound. Covariance matrix is greater than or equal to this matrix. So this is what they call uh, this partial order. This is between, these are matrices, not numbers. Okay, you have this matrix here, covariance matrix, and this side is also a matrix, assuming, of course, psi theta is non-singular. So you have this matrix order which says if A greater than or equal to B means A minus B is positive semi-definite. So using that sort of uh, partial order, uh, you can get lower bounds. Now, very recently, there is a paper in uh, just two years back, two, three years back, somebody improved Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. I don't think not many people uh, are aware of that. So I, we thought that's the end of this thing, but Somebody came up with the improved Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So it's, it's very well known, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, here I have written, expected way of uv square is less than equal to expectation of u square and v square, and equality occurs if and only if u and v are linearly related. It's a famous inequality. But then, so this inequality, you look at this first, 
So this inequality is uh, not uh, is invariant under uh, scale transformation. Scale means instead of u, suppose you replace u by c of times u. That's called scale transformation. But if you, it is invariant under scale transformation, but it is not invariant under uh, location transformation. So I'll explain what I mean by that. So if the random variable is not a constant, of course, this, this is positive. Of course, I'm assuming all these uh, expectations, everything is finite. So you have to write this. This inequality is invariant under non-zero constant multiplication, but is not invariant under translation. That means if you replace by u by u minus a, v by v minus b, then this inequality changes. So that means if you measure the random variables in different uh, origin, then uh, it's not the same inequality. But if it is replaced by scaling only, then it's the same. So this observation, this was made by uh, Colin Blythe. Those who know admissibility theory, they know that. Colin Blythe observed this. But then, so if u is replaced by cu and v is replaced by dv, where c and d are non-zero constants, the inequality does not change. However, if u is replaced by u minus a and v is replaced by v minus b, then the inequality changes uh, to the another inequality, namely you get this. The expected of u minus a square is greater than u minus a v minus b square divided by expected of v minus b square, which is different now. We get a different inequality. So, so the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is, is not the same, it, it changes once you have location. So, what are the best constants a and B to improve the inequality. And it's interesting because the inequality given earlier leads to a family of lower bounds and it can be shown the lower bound is optimum in expectation of A is expectation of U and B is expectation of V. E. And that leads to this inequality. And that just means uh, you know, correlation coefficient is uh, less than or equal to 1. So expectation of U square greater than or equal to expectation of square plus covariance V by variance V. That means are equivalently, this is the standard. So this inequality is sharp. So that's the best you can do. So this result was observed by Blythe and then Blythe and Roberts in 72. So the standard uh, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality in the real, real numbers are, suppose you have two sequences, x equal to x1, x2, xn, and y is y1 by 2 yn. Uh, they're just of finite sequences. Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is very well known in the discrete case also. Uh, that is just summation xi yi square is less than or equal to summation xi square, summation yi square. With equality occurring if and only if there exists a constant such that xi equal to cyi or yi equal to cxi, something like that. So, Walker improved this inequality. So, this is the one which is a sort of improved version of Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Okay. Of course, he gave an example why it is an improvement. Okay, this, has, this, is our, this inequality, this result was published in statistics and probability letters. So let me just uh, give some notation. So let's look at the special case. I'm just looking at the special case first. So you have two finite sequence numbers, x1, x2, xn, y1, y2, yn. This is the standard Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So let's introduce the notation. Uh, x bar is the sample mean, uh, these observations. Y bar is this for this. And this is... Uh, sample variance in some sense, but then of course not one, there is no one by n here. So summation xi square minus nx bar square, vy summation yi square, ny bar square. And the inequality is that thing, that is the Walker's inequality. Summation xi yi square is less than or equal to summation xi square times summation yi square minus n times uh, absolute x bar square root of vy minus absolute y bar square root of uh, v vx whole square. So there is a minus sign here. So this is earlier, you see, if, if, in Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, only these two are there. But Walker's inequality, that means you get a better inequality because this upper bound is, there is a minus sign here. So it's a better inequality than Cauchy-Schwarz. But of course, it turns out these inequalities become same under some conditions, which is clearly an improvement over the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So the probabilistic version, that's in for sequence of numbers. What is the probabilistic version of that? Walker's inequality. And the probabilistic function is the following. For any two random variables, u and v with finite second moment, of course, everything is, whenever you talk about Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, they should have second moment. Otherwise, that doesn't make any sense. So, 
expectation of u v square is less than or equal to expectation of u square and expectation of v square minus this quantity. So, this is the this obvious as long as this is non-zero, as long as this is non-zero, this is a better, better version of cauchy schwarz inequality. Okay, so because all along we believe that's the best inequality, but this is an inequality which is better than cauchy schwarz Of course, that means a strict improvement over the cauchy schwarz whenever expectation of u is zero or expectation of v is not zero. So, this is the, this is the improvement, this inequality, and the proof is in fact, the title of the paper is called self-improvement. So, I don't know how I couldn't understand the self, how, what is self about it. So, he uses, he applies this twice, for the, using the cauchy schwarz inequality itself. He has a technique, he has done it for Jensen's inequality also. He has improved Jensen's inequality. So, now he has proved cauchy schwarz inequality. So, this is, uh, as far as I know, uh, this is one of the first time that I have observed that. And I was able to use this thing and uh, applied uh, in several contexts. So this can be seen, for instance, suppose V is a standard normal random variable and you use a random variable with finite mean and finite variance. So V is some standard normal random variable and U is a random variable with finite mean and finite variance. Then the standard cauchy schwarz inequality implies expectation of UV square is expectation of V square. Okay, you see, because uh, V is standard normal, though expectation of V square is 1. Okay? Because V standard normal means mean is 0 and variance is 1, standard normal. So therefore, this is 1. So you get expectation of uv square is expectation of u square times 1. That's just expectation of u square, which is sigma square plus mu square. Whereas if you apply Walker's inequality, so whereas the improved Kaushal implies that you get this inequality, which I just now said. And if you compute that, okay, you, you get is sigma square. Expectation, because all these things, this term vanishes. And this is 1, so you, you get sigma square. So instead of mu square plus sigma square, you get sigma square. So it's a better inequality. So there is an example to show that it's Walker's inequality is better than Cauchy Schwarz. Okay? So it's clear that the inequality gives uh, a better upper bound than the inequality. So now Ibrahimov, which I mentioned yesterday, Ibrahimov extended the Kramerov inequality for general loss functions in a paper in 1999. So that was published in the magazine, journal called TEST, T-E-S-T. -E so Ibrahimov considered uh, you know, power loss functions, not squared error loss functions. So then uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of whole of literature in uh, physics on this uh, Kramer inequality. There is a paper on, by Bircher, generalized Kramer inequality, Kramerov inequality. Uh, maybe these also follow from Bergman divergence, I am not sure, I don't know. So, Bercher obtained a generalized Kramer inequality. Suppose you have two functions, you know, fx theta and gx theta are two probability density functions taking values in a, x taking values in a set and theta is a vector parameter. Look at the bias of the estimator. So, this, this is the standard uh, notation. So you consider another probability density function, gx theta, which can be a weighted version of the function. So, so this is the original density. This is some other density, which can be a weighted version. That means gx theta is the hx theta times fx theta, or escort density function. Yesterday, uh, Professor Deepak Day was mentioning escort density function. That means fx theta to the power q. So for some q, which can be a tuning parameter with applications in statistical physics. So if you have, if you measure the performance estimator by this uh, uh, power loss function, so power function absolute norm u to the power beta, and this is the expected loss, but not computed in the original density, but computed in energy. Okay, so you don't do, you, you are not computing. So is, you you look through that in another density. So you are you, even though x has a density f, but you compute in a different uh, respect to different density. So you can prove that uh, standard regularity conditions are there. You can prove that the power of this, uh, uh, or the risk or the loss power, expected loss, is some quantity which is similar to Fisher information, is greater than or equal to n times. This is the gradient of BF theta. As usually, you get uh, the derivative of the bias. So here you get this uh, gradient. 
So, they, and this alpha and beta are conjugates satisfying this property. And this fissure information, generalized fissure information is uh, defined by this form. So, this is the, the density with respect to the original density. This is the density with respect to your computer. It's called generalized fissure information of order beta contained in the probability density function f with respect to the probability density function g. So, these are all very varieties of extending this uh, kramer rao inequality. Then there is a Kelbert and Mosgun of uh, 2017 derived a generalized Kramer inequality for weighted covariance matrices. That means a multidimensional case. So, the, why do you need a weighted? The need for weighted function in statistics arises when the observations cannot be considered as equivalent. So, that means you have observations. So, it is, you know, you might, so you might say this observation is better than another observation. No question of independence dependence. That's not what we are saying. So, the observations, how good is one, how, it's a sort of, you know, you are in some cases, cannot be considered as equivalent or when the estimation of the parameter is sensitive in a neighborhood of some value. In a recent work, Cian C et al. See, so much work is still being done. It's 2014, 2017, I'm giving references. So, camera inequality is uh, evergreen, as I said, few minutes back. You now, you can keep on working on that. So, in recent work, Cian C et al. developed a unified approach for establishing a broad class of camera inequalities for location parameter. The location parameter is a simple case. Uh, suppose the function is differentiable with the derivative f x and uh, expectation of x is theta, that is the random variable is unbiased. Then of course, this is the standard version. Fisher information is very simple in this case and Kramer of inequality reduces to that. And you can show that equality occurs if and only if x is Gaussian here. So, this is the characterization aspect. So, inequalities of wild type and information inequalities Generalizing the concept of fissure information are uh, present in my work uh, in 1996. So it's appeared in uh, proceedings of the Indian National Science Academy several years ago, uh, where I have considered several types of information order. Now, uh, I am I, what I call Kramer of type integral inequality, or what they call Bayesian, uh, Bayesian uh, you know, risk inequality or something like that. So, I called it several years ago as the Kramer Rao type integral inequality. Because when you have a parameter which, which, is, uh, which has a prior, prior distribution, what is the uh, lower bound for the base risk? So, that is a standard problem uh, that was being discussed in those days. So, I have been working in this area for several years. Uh, in fact, uh, Bayer's version of Kramer Rao uh, integral inequalities, there is a volume edited by IEEE, uh, IEEE Association, which is 800 pages, <laughs> out of which there are four papers in uh, Bayesian risk and statistics. One is by me and one is Malay Ghosh and maybe a couple of others. So, there are a lot, all, all the work is done by engineers. You see, it so happened, I don't know why statisticians pick up things later than engineers. So, so, suppose theta is an estimator of the scalar parameter based on observation, taking values in a set. Suppose it has a prior density, lambda theta, it's of interest to measure the risk called base risk associated with the estimator. So, of course, there are some conditions which you need to assume, conditional expectation with parameter and then some uh, conditions on the joint density. This is a joint density, this is the density given theta, this is the prior density. So, we assume that as it, the theta change boundaries, then this goes to zero. So, using that you can get, you can get, uh, there is a, a misprint here, it should be theta hat x minus theta square is greater than one pi, expected information given theta plus the information in the prior. So, this is the information expectation, uh, i theta is the information, Fisher information given theta and this is the expected value of that. So, you get the prior density and you get this expression. And this is the uh, information in the prior. So, because if you have a lambda is the prior, so this is the information. The lambda is the Fisher information corresponding to the prior density and i theta is the conditional Fisher information given the parameter theta. So, all the computations can be justified with what is called a Fibini's theorem. And this is for those who are interested in uh, you know, why these are, how can this be true. 
this inequality is termed as Kramerov in integral inequality or sometimes known as Bayesian Kramerov inequality or Bayesian Kramerov lower bound. It's again a consequence of cauchy schwarz inequality. So the bound has been found to be useful tool for obtaining the minimax risk in non-parametric statistics and also found the subjection in non-linear filtering and signal processing. And this is the volume I was seeing, Van Trees and Bell. It's a very big book, this, this is 800 pages book. So it has all versions of a Bayesian risk, lower bounds. So there is some mathematics here, which I think I'll skip now. So standard, standard techniques. And this is the, there should be, there should be theta hat here. So this is the base estimator, their risk is lower bounded by this thing. A bit of algebra, you have to do something, and this is the result. Leading to the Kramer out type integral inequality, if you have this base estimator, and this is the parameter which you are estimating, and this is the expected value, it has greater than or equal to 1 by expectation of i theta plus i lambda. This is what Professor Deepak Dave was talking about yesterday, okay, which gives a lower bound for the base risk. And a lot of applications of these results in non-parametric statistics, uh, uh, especially if you want to do some, whether the you know, estimate you are getting. So I have improved this Kramerov type integral inequalities using uh, Walker's result. They are published in uh, three papers of mine published last year. And this is what I'm saying, in a voluminous work, gives a survey of base and lower bound for parameter estimation and nonlinear filter tracking and a volume containing selected papers dealing with Kramerov bounds global Bayesian bounds, hybrid Bayesian bounds, constrained camera bounds, and their applications to nonlinear dynamical systems. So camera type integral inequality is for multi-dimensional uh, multi CSS and sensored data. So you suppose you have data which is sensored. That means you are not able to observe. You have uh, some restrictions are there. So these results have been extended, and I have a uh, few papers I have written, and of course in abstract spaces. So these are some of the papers in this area. Bera is uh, Professor Rao's uh, interview, ET interview with Professor Rao. Then this is Bircher's paper, which appeared in uh, Journal of Physics, Math, Theory. Then Blythe and Roberts, which I have explained a few minutes back. This is Ganchi, IEEE Transactions in Information Theory. Then Kremer's uh, book in Mathematical Methods of Statistics. This is Damwa. So Kremer, Damwa, they have published uh, this um, Kremer all of inequality. So these are all uh, some of the references. And this is the interesting, I think those students, especially, you should look at this book, um, Ghosh, Mitra, and Patasaradi, Glimpses of India's Statistical Heritage. Uh, Professor Chaudhary mentioned this morning, and all of you should look at it, because it was written by statisticians themselves, with their personal history. It's an autobiography of their, their own. So what they went through, in uh, becoming a statistician. I think that should be interesting. Uh, if you search. It's like a novel. No, it's, it's no, mathematics. <laughs> no, not more mathematics. So it's a very nice book. I don't know whether it's available or not. Because I was at Indian Statistical Institute when this was being edited. So of course I got a copy because of that. So, but it's, it's, uh, it's not just Professor uh, Rao. There are other statisticians very well known. Uh, Professor Sukhath May was there and a uh, few others are also there. Then is this the Ibrahimov's paper, which I have mentioned, a generalization of the Kramerov inequality, Journal of Mathematical Sciences, 1999. This is the Professor Pathasardi's uh, paper, which I was mentioning, on the philosophy of Kramerov Bhattacharya inequalities in quantum statistics. So this is what I was uh, talking to um, Professor Pathamajumdar. Maybe we'll invite him uh, to you know, contribute to our volume. Then um, myself, I have written. Uh, uh, several years ago, uh, uh, sequential Kramerov inequalities. There are six sequential bounds which I didn't, I, I have not talked about. Then uh, this the uh, this the paper which I wrote on uh, Professor Rao in Life in Statistics. Then uh, this is improved Kramerov type integral inequalities are based in Kramerov, which was published in the Journal of Indian Society of Probability and Statistics. Then there is one in sequential analysis. Then of course uh, some results are there. Then Rajaram Bhatt has a very nice interview. This also you should see because Rajaram Bhatt talked to Professor Rao and his by correspondence email, they have written that interview is also in resonance. So you should see that. That's also very interesting. Uh, you will get to know that. Then this is the book which is Roy Friedan, Physics from Fisher Information. The whole book 
say, use the grammar of inequality to say what are the various things which you can do. This is all physics book, physics from Fisher information, uh, Roy Fried and Cambridge University. And this is the inequality, some inequality satisfied with the quantity of Fisher and Shannon, A.J. Stam, this Vantry's book which I have mentioned few minutes back, base and bounds. And this is the Walker's result, a self-improvement to the cauchy schwarz inequality. Well, I think that's all what I want to say and uh, thank you very much.